This dress had a highly anticipated launch after being featured in plenty of fashion magazines back in 2017. It sparked a fashion frenzy before it even went on the racks. Have a guess at the brand. Is it Gucci? Or perhaps Chanel? Well, it's actually from Primark. It cost exactly $15, and it sold out within just a few days of its launch. This is not the first nor the only time Primark has caused the sensation. In fact, it has a track record of setting trends. It's cheaper than the likes of H&M and Forever 21, but it still continues its onward march, making more and more money every year. So how does this brand keep up with being affordable and its popularity with its strong customer base? In this Behind the Business episode, we are going to break it down for you. But before we continue, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be the first to be notified of new Behind the Business videos that we post every week. Let's begin. While most brands have dedicated shops and malls, Primark took out a page from Walmart's playbook and changed the entire landscape for fast fashion. Primark has huge department store outlets which sell almost everything, from offering the latest fashion to beauty to homeware at the best value on the high street. Just look at Primark's Superstore in Birmingham. It is literally a full-fledged shopping mall, spread over five floors and 160,100 square feet. It offers an enhanced shopping experience. It boasts their largest ever duck and dry beauty studio, their first in-store barber salons from Joe Mills, and three amazing dining experiences, including the Disney Cafe. This Primark even holds a Guinness World Record for the world's largest fashion retail store. How about that? With huge stores to navigate and enticingly priced affordable clothing and products all around them, most customers end up spending hours browsing, during which it is inevitable that something will catch their eye and customers almost never leave empty-handed. If there's one surefire way to build a loyal customer base, it's to keep churning out cheap products. Primark has established itself as the go-to brand for everyone by constantly offering prices drastically lower than its competitors. It is one of the few brands at that price point that caters to families and older adults as well. Primark's target consumer is the average Jane and Joe who loves deals and getting the most bang for their buck. Customers always leave the store feeling satisfied with their shopping haul. After all, they manage to bag a complete outfit for less than 20 bucks. The positive sensation helps ensure that customers keep coming back in the near future and also to recommend the retail clothing store to others. As you can see, this is neuromarketing and it is proven to be quite powerful. Primark has been steadfastly ignoring the e-commerce boom. Primark does not sell their products online. The company did a trial run selling online through ASOS but ended the partnership due to shipping prices often exceeding the product's retail price. Behind the scenes, the operational cost of fulfilling online orders is high and particularly true in categories where items are low value. It is very difficult to make an order under 30 pounds stack up when consumer willingness to pay for delivery is low and returns are free. While e-commerce brings about a few benefits, such as reducing the running cost of a physical store. This is not important to a brand like Primark, who has already perfected its stores. And that is why Primark only has a website showcasing its products to browse, but no e-commerce wing. That isn't to say you can buy Primark online. You can find the products on Amazon at a potentially higher price, which kind of beats the purpose of shopping at Primark. Now ask yourself, when was the last time you saw a Primark ad plastered all over your city? Probably never. While most businesses feed a significant percentage of their revenue into marketing, Primark spends way less on marketing than its competition. It's those savings that are transferred onto consumers in the form of cheaper products. Primark utilizes social media very skillfully, with its Instagram bringing in close to 9 million followers. There is a snap and share room at Primark Birmingham, clearly designed to appeal to teens where groups of friends can take in as many clothes as they want. They can set the lighting and the music and then film and photograph themselves and upload them to social media. This enforces the fun day out element of the store and puts sociability back into the shopping experience. It's a very clever marketing move by Primark as it is essentially encouraging customers to act as influencers to drive free marketing. When Primark does run advertising campaigns, they are incredibly cost efficient. The My Brooklyn My Primark advertising campaign in 2018 featured actual customers as models, 
shifting away from unattainable standards in their imaging in favor of representing real relatable people. This not only cut down on costs for hiring professional models, it also helped send an effective message that yes, evidently their clothes are for everyone. Packaging can get expensive for customer-friendly brands that want to keep prices low. Experts estimate that clothing manufacturers spend $1 for every $11 spent. This covers everything from the plastic packaging on the clothes to the customized bags brands use. Primark is notorious for using plain brown paper bags to cut down on costs. One of the contributing factors to any successful business is low overheads. And when you look at the distribution map for Primark stores, you'll realize that most of them aren't downtown or in prime real estate. But instead, the stores are often located on the outskirts of town, bringing down the rent for the stores, reducing costs and increasing profits. Primark also cuts down on labor costs by having their suppliers pre-package their clothing for store shelves straight from factories. Fewer employees are needed and this brings about two benefits. One, fewer management staff, and two, fewer salaries to pay out. Primark's entire business model revolves around quantity over quality. The reason why they are able to keep a 12.96% profit margin, unlike other retailers who keep up to 18%, is their focus on buying and selling in huge numbers. The company enjoys purchasing economies of scale from bulk buying and transfers some of this savings to its patrons in the form of affordable prices, making it a win for all. Though most of its business comes from Europe, Primark notoriously outsources its manufacturing to countries which have cheap labor and a lower tax policy. This is where it gets problematic. Despite pressure from labor rights groups, Primark has long been silent about its suppliers and infamous sweatshops. They've been the center of a major controversy for exploiting child workers in third world countries. In an effort to become more transparent, Primark published their suppliers list in 2018. Their suppliers are spread over five continents, with the majority being in China. The manufacturers are independent exporters who sell to Primark as well as multiple other clothing brands. However, no matter how ethical or unethical their production standards are, it doesn't seem like people will stop shopping at Primark anytime soon. So, do you think eco-awareness among younger shoppers will pressure Primark into fair trade and sustainability? Or do you think Primark will ever jump on the e-commerce train seeing how people are increasingly habituated to shopping online? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be the first to be notified of new behind the business videos we post every week. Be inspired and we will see you in the next one. Since you made it all the way to this point, here are two more videos that we know you are going to love. Go on. Click on it, you know you want to.